So we covered this on the Humanist Report main show, um, but new poll shows Nina Turner's lead shrinking in Ohio special election. Now, this is according to an internal poll from Nina Turner's opponent, Chantel Brown. So Nina Turner originally had a 35-point lead, but according to this poll, which was conducted in July, um, Nina Turner is now leading with 43%, and Brown has 36%. So Brown is seven points behind. Now, I'm not necessarily sure how much stock we can put into this. This is from the Washington Free Beacon. This is a conservative news outlet. So I don't, I don't know anything about their methodology. Um, I don't know how accurate their polls are in general. Um, but they say that Nina Turner and uh, Brown are effectively tied at this moment. This is a very small sample size, but this is from, you know, a, a race within the district. So that's to be expected. I don't necessarily worry too much about that. I'd like to see the margin of error just to make sure it's no more than plus or minus 5%. It doesn't really matter too much for the purposes of this video. The point is that um, Nina Turner needs our help because she's now officially in danger. So a Washington Free Beacon poll shows Brown and Turner locked at 33%, both more than 20 points ahead of the rest of the pack. So they're both at 33% according to this poll. Now, um, the way that Chantel Brown basically closed the gap Oh, thank you, Winston. So the margin of error is 5.7%. So general rule of thumb for polls is you want to keep it below plus or minus 5%. But you know what? We'll, we'll accept that. I think that's that's reasonable. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate for purposes of like gauging where we are in this race. But we, we do need to know uh, what's going on. And that that is like what I would expect. The gap is closing. And at this current rate, um, by election day, it could be different where Chantel Brown could pass Nina Turner at that point. Now, the way that Nina Turner has been able to actually do this is by uh, having super PACs come to the rescue to smear Nina Turner, literally lie about Nina Turner, claim that she doesn't support Medicare for all or immigration reform or a $15 an hour minimum wage, just dirty stuff. And the Democratic Party leadership has come out to support Chantel Brown over Nina Turner, seeing that Nina Turner had a really gigantic lead. The Democratic Party couldn't just leave it. So they brought out uh, Hillary Clinton, Jim Clyburn, uh, lots of establishment figures. But thankfully, Nina, Nina Turner does have quite a bit of support. Now, I do want to say that there is an event coming out uh, coming up, I should say, that should help. So Nina Turner writes, join AOC and me on July 24th to meet with Ohio voters about the issues that matter most. Together, we are going to build a country where everyone can thrive no matter their zip code. So this is really important because back in 2020 or 2019, after Bernie Sanders had his heart attack, um, it felt like AOC and the squad endorsing him single-handedly saved his campaign and salvaged what was left, you know, when we all were demoralized and lost faith. So this is really, really important. I'm very appreciative of AOC for uh, for coming out and endorsing Nina Turner here. But what's interesting is that with Chantel Brown, we see shades of Pete Buttigieg here because she's faking endorsements, folks. We have evidence to suggest that she is faking endorsements. So uh, this is from Sam Allard from The Scene, who writes, Mike Dudley tells me his name has been used on Chantel Brown campaign literature without his permission. He was listed as one of 100 plus local elected endorsing Brown, but he's actually endorsing Nina Turner. And as you can see, like this right here, he has campaign literature. He has <laughs> he has one of the yard signs. He has a photograph of Nina Turner, some artwork of her. I mean, it's, it's obvious, right? So there's an article about this. If you, if you want to read this, uh, we're going to get into it just a little bit, but... Garfield Heights Councilman Michael Dudley has released a video in coordination with the Nina Turner campaign endorsing Turner for the Ohio 11th congressional seat. Dudley's endorsement, which he said is one of fewer than 10 he has made in 14 years of elected office, that goes to show you that he really cares about this race, is also a repudiation of Chantel Brown, whom he said erroneously included him on a list of more than 100 local elected officials supporting her. You saw my name out there supposedly endorsing another candidate, Dudley said in the video. That is absolutely not true. I haven't signed nothing or endorsed any other candidate. My endorsement clearly goes 
to Nina Turner. So if you're caught faking endorsements, as Chantel Brown has, that is incredibly embarrassing. But on top of that, when we're speaking about disingenuity, so um, after Chantel Brown solicited support from super PACs such as DMFI, well, they, they came to the rescue for Chantel Brown. And this is one of the mailers that were sent out on Chantel Brown's behalf. This is courtesy of Ryan Grimm. So um, this is what they sent out to voters there. Nina Turner voted to divide us. Nina Turner voted to divide us. So delegate name Nina Turner. Raise the minimum wage. No. Universal health care. No. Immigration reform. No. This is a lie. This is literally completely fabricated. Nina Turner supports raising the minimum wage. She is a staunch supporter of Medicare for All. In fact, in this district, since healthcare is a really popular issue, she's basically ran her whole campaign on Medicare for All. So for them to send this out, it is deceitful to say the least. And so basically, the way that they're coming to this conclusion is by saying, well, look, Nina Turner voted against the DNC platform. Therefore, she's against all of these things. Now, the reason why Nina Turner voted against the DNC platform in 2020 was because it didn't include universal health care. It did not include Medicare for all. So for them to say this is a lie. Now, Ryan Grimm also points out, reminder that Chantel Brown effectively solicited this super PAC support. And that's exactly right. So... Let's scroll down to the images here. So she included quotes from the pro-Israel lobby. Um, and she was basically sending out like the bat signal to the pro-Israel lobby saying, hey, I'm in danger. I really need your support right now. So there's a quote about her from DMFI president Mark Melman. There's no question that Brown is going to be a strong advocate for the U.S.-Israel relationship. She wants to learn. She is inquisitive and she has a track record of being collaborative. Um, we have pro-Israel America's uh, Jeff Mandelson. We need leaders in Congress who value the U.S.-Israel relationship, as if we don't have enough already, right? And will work to strengthen security, economic, scientific, and cultural relationships between our two nations. And that candidate in the 11th district race is Chantel Brown. So she did this, mind you, just before Israel did another genocide. I mean, it's not like the ge the genocide isn't ongoing, but they did... Um, a murder campaign in Gaza, you know, um, evicting Palestinians from their homes in Sheikh Jarrah. Meanwhile, this disgusting, immoral individual is soliciting support from the lobby who defends this. So, I mean, Nina Turner, if she really was a bad person, she could just send out mailers lying about Chantel Brown saying Chantel Brown is pro-genocide. And I don't even think that that would be uh, as big of a stretch as this is right here, Nina Turner can send out a mailer saying Chantel Brown supports apartheid. Chantel Brown supports the uh, subordination of human beings in, in uh, Palestine. But Nina Turner isn't doing that because Nina Turner is running on the issues. Nina Turner doesn't have to lie because the issues uh, are important and popular enough. So, folks, I am asking you, please, instead of subbing to me tonight... Uh, please donate to Nina Turner instead. $5, $1, any little bit will make a difference. Um, now we're in the end zone. Like this is, this is crunch time. The election is coming up. Early voting has already started. So if you live in the 11th congressional district of Ohio, please get out and vote. Support Nina Turner. Thank you, Winston, for sharing the link there. And I just want to say, um, folks, I don't want to kick myself later. I want to make sure that we do everything in our power to elect Nina Turner. Uh, because I feel like she is one of the few individuals who would truly be a fighter for change in the United States. She's the leader that's lacking right now in Congress. We have progressive members of Congress. We have members of Congress who have the right policies. But we need someone with a really strong voice, a large enough national platform national name recognition who would actually lead we need nina turner in congress it is absolutely crucial so i am begging you please 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 donate to nina turner i don't need the subs i don't need the the bits i need you to donate to nina turner we all need nina turner in congress um it's it's absolutely crucial and we'll take some time to actually watch some campaign ads from nina turner because you can tell she's running a campaign on substance she's not running on demonizing her opponent. She's running on the issues, as I stated, and that's uh, Nina Turner. So uh, look at this ad here. 
My grandson is the joy of my life. After the challenges of this past year, I worry about his future. Will he reach his potential? Grow up safe, free of violence? Will he be able to afford college? Find a good job that pays a living wage? Will he have quality, affordable health care? I'm running for Congress to make the answer yes. I'm Nina Turner, and I approve this message to be a voice for change for my grandson and yours. So not only is that ad adorable, but it is incredibly substantive. Um, Nina Turner is is one of a kind. Um, Let's watch another ad here, folks. Something that continues to haunt me to this day is my mother dying at the young age of 42 years old. No insurance, no money in the bank. So when I fight for Medicare for all, I'm fighting for my mama who's not here and working class people who need to have health care as a right, not a privilege. The poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class should live a good life. Wealth should not dictate whether or not you have access to health care. I'm Nina Turner, and I approve this message. I mean, this is the exact type of person who you want in Congress, somebody who dealt with these things, who who struggled. Um, a couple more here. I mean, Every all of these are great. Every time the life of an unarmed black man is cut short by police violence, We're outraged. When it happened here, I said enough is enough. Not as a state senator, but as the mother of a black son. I led Ohio's first bipartisan community police task force to stop racial profiling and address police brutality. We established standards for accountability, hiring, and use of force. I'm Nina Turner, and I approve this message to be a voice for change. I mean, imagine if Nina Turner was in Congress um, it, it would just be incredible. One last ad here. I'm Nina Turner. I'm running for Congress to deliver real change. I grew up in the Lee Harvard neighborhood on a street just like this, the oldest of seven children to working class parents. I graduated from John F. Kennedy High School. Soon after, I met my husband and we raised our family here. I got the chance to return to school and graduate from Cuyahoga Community College, where later I was a professor of history. My fight for change began on the Cleveland City Council, where I secured good housing for seniors. Then on to the Ohio Senate, where I led the bipartisan effort to create the Ohio Task Force on Community Police Relations to stop racial profiling and police brutality. I co-chaired Senator Bernie Sanders' campaign for president to make the wealthy and big corporations pay their fair share and fight for Medicare for all. In Congress, we'll make sure women get equal pay and working families earn a living wage. I approve this message to be a voice for change. So folks, um, everything is on the line right now. If she wins this primary, she wins that seat in Congress. This is a very heavily Democratic-leaning district. So uh, the general election will essentially be insignificant. She just needs to beat Chantel Brown. And we're right here. And look, even though I've been donating just automatically the $27, I'm going to donate again to Nina Turner because what they need now is to just blast mailers everywhere in this district. They have to make sure that they get the word out and they retake control of the narrative because now all of a sudden people in this democratic leading district think that Medicare for all, like that Chantel Brown is the supporter. Chantel Brown literally doesn't support Medicare for all. And now she's lying about Nina Turner about one of the most important policies, most popular policies that she supports. So it is very, very important to support Nina Turner. Yeah. So the FEC deadline was passed last night, I want to say, but still, if you can get money in, um, that still can go a long way. They're going to have to have extra boots on the ground out there to get the word out. They're going to have to send out even more mailers uh, because right now, even though she had the monetary advantage, uh, the super PACs are weighing in to support Chantel Brown heavily. So we have to make up for that deficit um, if there is one now, because I mean, things are changing quickly. So we have to we have to change it. We have to fight. And if we lose, I just want to know that we went down um, swinging. So please, folks, support Nina Turner, donate to Nina Turner. Anyone here right now who has donated to Nina Turner, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And let me know right now so I can I can thank you.